Hear ye, hear ye, Russia, China, Turkey, and several others have had enough. They're having a dump the dollar party. What does that mean for you? We never can get those 40 acres and a mule, but we keep on trying. A reparations update. Stick around. It's the weekend wrap up. Hello, my people. It's your Negro with aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend and that you are getting set up for a fantastic week. As usual, I'd like to bring you the weekend wrap up where we focus usually on three or four stories that really require your attention. But this week, we're just going to focus on two. Number one, you need to understand the state of the U.S. dollar. Now, this has been a long, 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 long time coming. But you know, some change going to come, except not in your pocket. And we also want to keep our eye on reparations. You know, there's many of us who have given up hope of reparations or we figure that the quote unquote uh, intellectuals among us should be at the table. But I am concerned that folks with good old common sense are being left out. So as we look at two cases in which uh, state and local muni municipalities are grappling with um, reparations for ADOS, reparation for native born black people and the descendants of American slaves. I think there are several key elements that need to be brought to the table and our quote unquote representatives seem to be a little bit too timid. So we need to light that fire under those butts. Here we go. In our first story tonight, Hala Dala. Uh, recently, China, Russia, and Turkey, Turkey is known as one of the United States allies, they've all decided to dump the dollar. Ouch! Russia is removing the U.S. dollar from its National Wealth Fund. Its National Wealth Fund is the fund that backs its pensions. This is a $185 billion, with a B, billion dollar fund. Of course, that's really nothing in U.S. terms because the pensions in California are far more than that. But what's the danger, you say, if people stop using the U.S. dollar? Well, for one thing, it means that confidence in the dollar it means the buying power of the dollar is far less than it used to be. So as I explained to you last week in one of the stories from last week, if we're used to a, a loaf of bread being two or three dollars and maybe three to five dollars for special specialty breads, now a loaf of bread, your regular wonder bread, white bread, that could cost you as much as ten dollars a loaf maybe even higher. We haven't seen these kinds of prices since the Great Depression that our grandparents went through or our parents, depending on their age. But believe me, that's where the United States is heading. The other issue is when you don't take a country's currency, you are in effect saying you are big dissing <laughs> the country and you are in effect giving it the big F you. Because a country's currency is also its calling card. It's its brand, so to speak. And as I explained in another story, I believe it was last week, 
When you do not take the currency of a country, you're saying you don't believe the country. You're saying that the country does not have the means to back up the value of its currency. And you are, in fact, saying that that country's brand, it has cracks in it. And it's no good. Its credibility is shot. And that is, in effect, what both China and Russia, as well as Turkey, are saying to the United States. On a larger platform, this means the geopolitical powers are shifting greatly as we speak. And it also means the paper tiger that has been the United States for a long, long, long time is about to be shredded. What does that mean for us on the ground? Well, the Bible talks about the last days and it tells us that the bear and the eagle, I believe it is, are going to get together to take out uh, one of the new one of the world powers. Well, the bear is usually Russia, and I believe it's the eagle is China. I might have my animals mixed up. The bottom line is the United States is getting ready to go through a major metamorphosis. And if your hand is not in the hand of the man who stilled the waters, you're going to be in big trouble. So, folks, I really highly suggest that you start stocking up food. Um, some of you may think that you'll survive this with cryptocurrency. Remember, that's just a digital platform. It's just a concept in digital form. It's not real. So if you don't pass the social con uh, social uh, credibility or social credit scores, they can easily knock your... Um, it can easily lock you out of your account. So you've got to be very careful. Uh, make sure that you've got tangibles like food, various types of food at home, to feed your family with, that you're learning to grow food, even potatoes, even if you were only able to grow one or two things in your home and use that to barter for other stuff that's coming up. Uh, you know, the United States is headed for an economic collapse and it's not going to be pretty. And now for our weekly reparations update. So let's start on the congressional level first. H.R. 40, the congressional legislation that was introduced more than 40 years ago by the late Congressman John Conyers, has uh, received some support in recent months. And it needs the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, to go hard for black folks like she's gone, gone for all these illegal immigrants. To go hard for black folks like she went hard to get legislation passed to protect Asians. To go hard for black folks like she's gone hard to get legislation passed for the alphabet soup folks. So it needs a sponsor in order for it to be brought to the Senate. Well, we'll see how that goes. In the state of California, though, there is a committee that has um, gained momentum and has been formally started in uh, the last year. And this committee is confronting the harms of slavery and it debates on direct payments, among many other things. California is the state where I was born and raised and where I currently reside. There used to be as much as I believe it was 40 percent black folks in the state of California. We're now down to 6.5 and that probably includes quite a number of biracial folks. So California has done a great job of extracting lots and lots of labor from black folks. And I know some of you young whippersnappers won't believe it, but the agriculture, agricultural industry that California is famous for, that work used to be done by black folks. It used to be done by Filipinos and it used to be done by whites long before they decided to replace the labor with Mexican immigrants. So California has been benefited greatly from the black population, not only from the entertainment industry, but also the agricultural industry and many, many um, 
contributions early black settlers made to this state, including uh, folks like James Beckwith, who founded a uh, a path uh, that opened up uh, Oakland and the East Bay area long before the trains came through. He was a multilingual person and spoke some of the local native indigenous peoples um, uh, languages and they and, and they taught him uh, some of the trails that they used in order to get around in the East Bay area without going through the Sierras. That alone, that information alone is worth billions of dollars today. So as usual, we have um, the traditional responses. Well, California was never a slave state. Oh, this should be done in the South, et cetera, et cetera. But California spends $25 billion plus annually on people who aren't even supposed to be in the state. So it's time for black folks. If we want reparations, it's time for us to show up at the table armed with all of the information and all of the examples of how this country has um, gotten together to spend taxpayer dollars for people it wants to. It wants to succeed and we need to stop bullshitting. We need to stop being um you know, afraid to to mention immigration, afraid to mention the alphabet soup people, afraid to mention all of this kind of stuff. And we need to stop this kumbaya crap. So if California wants to represent the model repar reparations on a state by state level, then they need to come with it. And we need to make sure that they do make sure. In other news on the reparations front, the city of Kansas City is also beginning to talk about reparations. There is a committee forming there and there are a variety of proposals that they're considering. Now, in my opinion, we as a people are unfortunately being funneled into the same old, same old. In other words, you know, affirmative action programs, um, maybe housing assistance, maybe educational assistance. But nobody wants to cut that check and give us the mule, which these days would be plots of land, lucrative land, as well as housing at zero interest. Our reparations should be over multi-generations because the harm done to us was over multi-generations and it needs to be in multiple facets. This would include free education at the, at the university level, it, including both state and private universities. It would include technical training. It would include non-competitive employment opportunities specifically for American blacks. And I don't mean Africans. I mean American blacks, ADOS. And it would also include cash payments, housing assistance, and every single thing else they have given to every other group of people but they want to act like they don't know what to do for us. So folks, um, although I have about 200 um, show titles that I'm working on trying to get out to you rapidly, uh, since next weekend is Juneteenth, I'm going to do a specific reparations model um, video for you and get that out to you uh, so that you can share that with other folks. Uh, I'm glad that reparations had started, however piecemeal it is, but the fact that it is piecemeal should be placed before the, the national conscience of America because other groups have not had to march. They don't even vote. They don't have to be in the country. Uh, they don't even have to be in the country legally, let alone speak English and trillions of dollars a year or billions of dollars a year rather are spent on these people. And it collectively has been in the trillions over the last 50 years specifically. And if you want to zero in on uh, 2000 and uh, 1980 rather, if you want to zero in on 1980, which is when uh, certain uh, um, immigration from certain countries kicked into high gear then you would really see what this country does between the visa programs, the amnesty programs, the refugee programs, et cetera, et cetera, for people that it wants to succeed. Now that does not absolve us of personal accountability. 
But one of the reasons why you don't see the levels of violence in some of these other um, uh, communities is simply because they don't have to. They are given non-competitive employment. They are given housing subsidies. They are given free education, and, and which is culturally sensitive. And I could go on. We are the only group that seems to want to handle this flying bly. Hail to the gnaw. All we need to do is pull up the various things they've done for the indigenous populations, the various things they've done for various Im- immigrant groups and so-called am- uh, amnesty programs, ref- refugee programs, sanctuary cities, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the various things they've done for the alphabet soup people, which are largely white people sleeping with same sexes. Okay, come on. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? All right. So, um, you know, Kansas City is on the map now. They're beginning to figure it out, but we need to help them. That'll do it for this week. Thanks once again for hanging out with me on the blackboard. And I want to make sure to point out that I'm going to have a link in the description box to a video done by another YouTuber. His name is Truth Unedited. And he has a very comprehensive uh, video on the coming collapse, uh, economic collapse in the United States. Uh, Some really great background along with um, suggestions about how you might handle this. Now, both of us are Christ followers. So our advice to you is always going to be the same. The first thing you need to do is humble yourself before the Lord and ask for forgiveness of all of your sins. We all do it. We all offend God every single day. But the word says that even one wrong thought, even one wrong word, even one wrong uh, handling of a situation, not from a place of love, that's enough for death. We don't want you to, um, to face eternity without the covering of Jesus Christ. And that only comes by your going before him, recognizing that you are a sinner and we all sin. It's impossible to be on earth as a human being and not sin. And asking his forgiveness and asking for him to cover you and accepting him as your Lord and master. Now, I mean, Lord and Savior. Now, Lord means master. And, you know, some of us, you know, with the history that we have with slavery, you know, you may feel like you don't want another master, that you want to be your own master. Well, you can do that, but then you're going to face the Lord God Almighty of all the universe without the covering of his son, Jesus Christ. And that means sure death. And that means destruction. And it means, unfortunately, not a state of not being. You know, as many in uh, the dominant society would tell you that you just simply cease to exist. No, 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 no. You will exist, but you will exist in a pain of un, in a place of unending torture, unending uh, horror, unending pain and suffering, unending forever, ever, ever, ever. Yes. So our number one advice to you would be to repent today while you can and then take the practical steps that can buy you a little more time uh, in the earthly realm, you know, such as storing up food, such as making sure that you have adequate cash in your house in a case of an emergency, if they shut down the banks and things like that, then you're not out there in the melee, learning how to grow food, even a few crops uh, that you grow at your house would be good to be able to barter with learning what kinds of things that people are going to want to barter with in the future, because this is approaching rapidly. Um, so anyway, I want to make sure that you check that out. If you find value in this video, and I certainly hope that you do, please like, share, and subscribe. Remember, the whole point of this channel is to educate and empower you so that you wind up on the right side of eternity. If you find value in this, bring your folks, let's build this channel, and let's be, uh, Negroes with aptitude that are headed for, um, our heavenly, a uh, heavenly existence and in, and in eternity with, uh, almighty God in right standing with him. All right. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.